Sydney is, well, was dragon territory. Weedy sea dragons are strange but gorgeous little fish, like something drawn from a kid's imagination. And as the name suggests, they look and live in seaweed. Well, it's kelp to be specific. It wasn't long ago that it was common to see weedy sea dragons off our coastline. I live on the north side of Sydney and this is where I did a lot of diving. I'd see them all the time, but unfortunately that's not the case today. They're now classified as near threatened and scientists fear that we should be considering them as endangered. So what's happening? Well, we're still not sure, but it's likely to be a combination of their biology and what's happening here off our coastline. The Eastern Australian Current, the EAC, stops just off Sydney's doorstep. And the EAC is strengthening, and this is making Sydney's marine waters warmer. In fact, we're considered globally as a marine hotspot for climate change. As the sea temperatures rise off Sydney, our kelp forests are dying. This also impacts the animals that live in the kelp, like our weedy sea dragons. This is a problem not only restricted to Sydney, kelp forests across the temperate zone of the Southern Hemisphere are in trouble. But weedy sea dragons don't like to travel far from home. They have a very narrow home range and are extremely poor swimmers. And you can see they have only tiny fins. And unlike the seahorse, they can't hold by wrapping their tail around seaweed or coral. Instead, they drift in the water, which works for them. They blend in with the kelp. And these slow little fish are at home in the kelp, which they rely on for camouflage for protection against predators. But the kelp forests are not only for protection, but also for food. The weedy sea dragons lie in the kelp and wait for their food to come to them. They suck in tiny prey, zooplankton, into a toothless mouth. In fact, their jaws are fused to form a pipe. This means that they can only eat tiny food, smaller than their snout. Alongside their disappearing kelp habitat, there's a second problem, their biology. Weedy sea dragons have a low annual reproductive output. And although the female produces a lot of eggs, not many will survive to be breeding adults. They're related to the seahorse, and although they don't have a pouch for rearing their young, just like the seahorses, it's the males that raise the young. But we'll come to that in a later lecture. When you see a weedy sea dragon in the wild, you typically see just the one or a pair. And if you see a pair, they're likely to be partners. This pair are performing their ritualised swimming, which they do prior to mating. And before mating, the male prepares his brood patch, which is on the underside of his tail. He needs to get it ready for her eggs. His tail becomes swollen, soft and spongy, and the female actually pushes her eggs into that spongy part of his tail. How weird's that? Here's this breeding pair is getting ready for the egg transfer. The female's at the front, and you can see her swollen cloaca. It's full of eggs. At the back, you can see the male swollen tail, his brood patch. He's ready for her eggs. Once her eggs are on his tail, he'll fertilize them and she'll lay a few hundred eggs. He'll carry them for a couple of months until all the hatchlings have emerged. But most hatchlings won't survive. And this is where the problems lie. That low annual reproductive output makes them extremely vulnerable to environmental change Yet the weedy sea dragons, who remember they're not great travellers, they're living in a habitat that's rapidly disappearing. So this is probably why their population is declining along our coastline. But if you do see a weedy sea dragon, please take a photo. They can be individually identified with their unique patterns of markings on their sides, just like fingerprints are for us. And scientists are using those photos to help track the population. As the kelp forests move further along our coast, hopefully our weedy sea dragons find a new home.